We're at the Hood Aerodrome in Masterton, New Zealand, prepping these authentic, detail-accurate World War I aircraft for an actual, but safe, aerial dogfight. Using cutting-edge laser technology, simulated machine gun fire, and smoke and practical effects to indicate lethal hits. The thing that's so finicky about this work is that it's not just the planes that are delicate. Everything about them is delicate, including the flying. Just wiring up the planes and attaching our laser sensors is a surprisingly intensive and nerve-wracking job. It's critical that none of the gear we add interferes with the safe operation of the plane. The last place you want any surprises is in the air. I'm trying, I'm trying to route this wire so that it doesn't touch any of the other important crap in here. And everything in here is important. <laughs> I really hope I did that right. With our lasers all wired up, now to add a little more cacophonous tech to our planes, simulated machine gun fire. We are not just attaching lasers to rubber guns on these planes. We've contracted Hamish Bruce, an armorer who is bringing some gas blowback guns for us to use. These guns will go bang at a very loud decibel rate, and they'll deliver some muzzle flash to make this experience more authentic from an audio standpoint and from a visual standpoint. These machine guns are modified replicas of the same guns that would have been mounted on the planes. They're designed to release a mixture of propane and oxygen in synchronized bursts with the machine gun's trigger. That gas gets ignited by an electronic spark plug and voila! You get pretty lifelike and loud simulated machine gun fire. Next up, practical effects to indicate the plane has received a lethal hit. In a true dogfight, a bullet-ridden engine would emit telltale smoke, and so will ours. We're installing smoke canisters so that when the indicator box signals a lethal engine or fuel tank hit, the pilot will flip a switch, releasing a smoky simulation of the real thing. But what about the most lethal hit of all? Besides taking out the engine, it's clear that one of the best ways to take down a plane is to take down the humans in charge of that plane. And I wanted more than just the notation that a human has been killed. Uh, so I'm going to try and build in that theatrical kill shot indicator onto this helmet. Yes, a helmet that will indicate my brains being blown out using some red paper streamers. Here's how this is going to work. Put the helmet on. And when I see that I've been killed, I pull this pin and this whole thing goes flap, and all of my brains fly out. For safety purposes, pilots Gary and Bevan will not be wearing brain-exploding helmets. So we've come up with something a bit less invasive to indicate that they've taken a hit. Zach has designed and built a beautiful automatic release mechanism for a roll of toilet paper that when the pilot gets hit, he pushes a button and it releases a flag of maybe three or four meters of toilet paper that lets us know we've gotten a hit on the pilot. With all of our effects in place, it's time for a crucial systems check in the air. Bevan's agreed to be our test pilot. Bevan tests the gas blowback guns, then flips the switch to release the smoke. Yeah! Wow! I saw muzzle flash! <laughs> the gun sounds amazing. The smoke is just a tad thin. Next up, the pilot hit indicator, our red toilet paper blood trail. Bam, 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 bam. Bevan hits the switch and... Our toilet paper craps out. That's not as spectacular as I was hoping. 
it seems that our toilet paper roll was a little too big for our dispenser and was jammed in too tight to unspool. Eh, these things happen from time to time. So, after a quick trip back down to Earth and refitting the dispenser with a thinner roll of red cray paper, Bevan takes off for one more test. And we are all systems go. Our paper blood trail works like a charm. After adding extra canisters for a more robust smoke trail, it's almost time for our dogfight to begin. But in order for this to feel truly authentic, there's one more stop I need to make. So we've got some aviation, you know, gear in here. A lot of this is sort of, you know, army and yeah. various. This is sort of mainly First World War. It's mainly First World mainly, War, Mainly, well, so... obviously, maybe not. Yeah, <laughs> this is a little it. earlier. Before I take flight, of course, I want to look the part. I'd like to dress as a correct World War I aviator. And lucky for me, Peter in his collecting prowess, which makes me look like an amateur, has thousands and thousands of costumes, including tons and tons of World War I aviator uniforms, coats, hats, goggles, among many other things. And he is going to outfit me correctly. Every aviator needs a great flight jacket. And of course, Peter's got me covered. You know, every time I look on eBay, the amount of World War I stuff is surpassingly thin. Is that because of you? <laughs> I couldn't possibly comment. I'm looking at this thing. This is totally amazing. Frankly, there's a lot more fabulousness than I expected to encounter. Oh. These things are 100 years old. Peter's collection of World War I uniforms is stunning, and it's the final touch I need for my showdown in the sky. One final systems check, we're ready to fly. <laughs> <laughs>